I've, I've read conflicting things about where Lincoln was. Okay. I mean, some people say, you know, he's the, the greatest guy that ever came along and always, you know, was looking out for the black man and so on like that. I'm not sure if that's totally true, mm -hmm. but he also understood that if we said that all men are created equal and that's foundational to our government, we kind of need to start working in that direction. Mm -hmm. And I think my, my understanding is from what I've read about Lincoln is that he was an abolitionist, but not a real fervent, you know, on fire abolitionist. And he recognized we've got some things to sort out here. And fortunately, a platform for him to to speak about that came along when the Republican Party was formed in 1854. And he was actually the first um, nationwide uh, candidate for president from the Republican Party. And that was one of the majors on that major platform, wasn't it? With, yeah, I, the, exactly. The slavery answer. So he started down that road, but he also recognized, again, political compromise comes into play, that there are a lot of people who disagreed with him. And so he kind of had to lay some groundwork, mm -hmm. ultimately leading up to, to uh, becoming president and then having a platform. I mean, he didn't get much of a much of a honeymoon period when he was elected president because other states started seceding on him. Mm -hmm. So in the grand scheme of things, he had the right idea, but it took a while for him to bring anything to pass. But the issue was on the table. The issue was absolutely on the table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it represented a whole bunch of back and forth, you know, in terms of political power uh, during that whole period of time. And what about blacks' involvement in the, in the political process during that particular area? Were there any significant uh, times? Uh, events or whatever. Well, I I think it's interesting, and I've always thought this, Frederick Douglass is one of the oh, yeah. few black men that is talked about a lot in yeah. history classes, right. and I always thought it was remarkable that um, at a time when everybody said, well, the blacks are all slaves, here's an educated guy debating Abraham Lincoln. I was I thought he was a white guy for a long time. <laughs> yeah. I, didn't, I didn't realize he was black, and then, then, then all of a sudden I understood that was all about and, and I, 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 too, started reading more. Well, and see, part of what I learned, again, pretty recently, is the whole reason a guy like Frederick Douglass was possible is there was a pretty well-established system of education for blacks during that in period north, of time. In the north, though, right? Right. Primarily, primarily in the north, yes. Pretty much. But the thing is that a lot of the founders had a hand in establishing uh, universities where blacks could get a college education. Yes, yes, yes. So... There actually was, there, there were opportunities outside of slavery, but we never hear that. Mm -hmm. That's not taught in school. I know I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself a bit, but getting into politics as because now this new Republican Party, if you will, and th that you made mention about in, in part of the deal here in some yeah. research, that blacks actually uh, uh, created the Republican Party, started the Republican Party in Texas. Well, that, that that's well, not the, that that's not the first uh, instance of the Republican Party. That happened after the Civil War. But after the Texas, Civil War. of course, was right. in the South. Right. But yeah, again, what most people <laughs> don't know is, if you look at what was going on around the time of the Civil mm -hmm. War, by and large, it was a Republican Democrat thing. Right. Exactly. Okay. And since the Democrats pretty much control the South, what do you think the chances are yeah, exactly. that they? that the people who had been enslaved in the South are going to be Democrat. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So there were a whole bunch of, I think there were like 120 blacks and like 20 white men that formed the Republican Party of Texas in 1867. <laughs> 1867? Yeah. Right after the Civil War. Now that was back in the day Jeez, when, the, when, the, when blacks were Republicans. Jeez, right. Jeez. <laughs> And, then what, and what about this Klan thing? I mean, that was the other thing, too. The Klan played a very prominent role right. in the Democratic Party, as I understand in history. Well, and, you know, I don't want a candy coat. Right, I right, mean, there's, right, there's right. a lot of stuff about the Klan yeah, that yeah. can't be justified. Right. But what most people need to understand is that the Klan was initially formed by Southern Democrats to put down Republicans. <laughs> okay? And because most black men at that time tended to be Republican, guess what? It, so my understanding is that back during that whole period of time in the early years of the Klan, there were about 4,800 people who were lynched. And we all know mm -hmm. that that happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And what most people do not know is that probably 1,500 of the people who were lynched were white. So a third, mm -hmm. roughly. Now, we all know that black people were um, were lynched during that period of time. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't put a pretty face on that. No, no, that's true. That's right. But it was really a Democrat versus Republican thing initially. It wasn't white versus black initially. It's politics. It's yeah. The strong politics. We had partisan politics even then, I yes. guess. Is that what we have today? Is that the I've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's go through the, the time. Now, after the Civil War, let's talk about, again, participation and in, in the issue of African Americans. You know, naturally, we've gone through various entities or whatever, but what, what about that? What about uh, you, those areas? You want to talk about the Civil War or after the right Civil War? Right after the Civil War now. Let's talk about this. Well... In fact, we might mention a minute about, the, let's take a moment for about the Civil War aspect of it, because yeah. the, the number of African Americans that participated, some 300 and some odd thousand, I, that's the Buffalo Soldiers and this, that, right. and the other, you know, that kind of a deal. So I want to make sure we mention that. Well, we, obviously, you know, one of the things that's no, well known about um, Abraham Lincoln is that he did the Emancipation Proclamation right. in eight, early in 1863, and that kind of was a, a shocking thing in many respects, but it was a reflection of him getting to the point where we've got to start making some progress there. Well, the Emancipation Proclamation obviously was not um, received in the South, and it wasn't honored in the South. Mm -hmm. But that set the stage for a whole bunch of other things. And the Republican Party, again, um, said is in their platform in 1864, we've got to start actually incorporating some things that make it possible for everybody to participate in what's going on. And the first step that came out of that Republican Party platform was the 13th Amendment abolishing slavery. Now again, that didn't get any traction in the South mm -hmm. at the time, but it was honored in the North, and it was possible because only anti-slavery people basically were voting for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the 14th Amendment came along, you know, a couple years later, and the 15th Amendment, which did away with uh, various sorts of requirements for voting and so on like that. So during the period from about 1865 to 1868, we passed three constitutional amendments, all driven by race. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then what came after that was a whole bunch of civil rights legislation, which again was driven by the Republican Party platform mm -hmm. to make it clear in the, in the law that everybody should enjoy the same civil rights. Mm -hmm. Most people today tend to think that the civil rights movement somehow magically appeared in the 1950s or the 1960s. Mm -hmm. Well, it didn't. Mm -hmm. It started way back in the Civil War era and Reconstruction. But what happened is in the late 1870s, the Republican or the Democratic Party took over the White House and Congress and all the stuff that had been passed up to that point was repealed. And then we began a period of decades, literally, from about 1876 or 1878 to the early 1950s. And then Kennedy's and Johnson came in at that time. Think about that transition of, i.e., from the African American standpoint of who's supporting them and, i.e., continuation. Well, but, but even at that, you know, a lot of people tend to think that that President Kennedy and President Johnson were the guys that thought of this. Well, right. the Civil Rights Act that was passed in 1964 and 1965 mm -hmm. actually was introduced by President Eisenhower in 1954. And guess who was opposing it? The Speaker of the House, President, who was, would later yeah. be President Johnson. Yeah. So then you fast forward 10 years, and all of a sudden they're for what they used to be against. Mm -hmm. Okay, and obviously Kennedy was no longer part of the, President Kennedy was no longer part of the picture. But again, the whole idea that civil rights needed to be an active conversation and need to be enshrined in the law originally came from President Eisenhower. And, you know, we worked our way up, and, and I think those were all good things. But, but the, so, so what I'm hearing is that that was the transition point then, maybe, maybe right. you know, from the standpoint that now... Uh, Democrats are recognized, the Democratic Party is not recognized as the savior of, of blacks or African Americans. Right. As prior to, but it was basically generated by 
the Republican Party. Right. And what, the- and what most people, what people don't understand because it's not taught, mm-hmm. is the idea that the Civil War amendments and mm-hmm. all that civil rights legislation were generally passed by Republican majorities, if not unanimous Republican votes in Congress, mm-hmm. and very few Democrats. And that's the way it stayed until the uh, until the 1950s, and eventually in the early 1960s, the perception was that the Democrats were the civil the party of civil rights, and I don't know how that trans- transition happened, but that's what happened. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting to look at the period of time from the late 1870s to the early 1950s, and realize that, you know. There was a lot of bad stuff that happened, and segregation and all those things that we know in modern times, Mm -hmm. that's when all that happened. Mm -hmm. And we're fortunate that cooler heads prevailed, and the Civil Rights Acts were passed, and they've been amended over time, and, Mm -hmm. you know, we've made some really serious progress. But it it led a tortured history up to that point. Let's, let's get some other notable time. We may be going back and forth, by the way, folks, uh, in regards to this conversation that uh, Herbert and I are having, but uh, but bear with us. You know, we're just trying to get the information out there for you. you know, it's very important. It's a very important thing, and I would suggest very strongly that you pay attention from the standpoint of saying, you go out and do a little research and get a get a feel of, of, of what, what actually transpired, because I think it's very, very important during these particular times. We're having right. some, and that's one of the reasons why we're bringing this particular show at this point in time. We're having some very, very tough times and so it's it, it's a, it's a meaningful time from the standpoint that we've got to join together to i.e. resolve some of the issues that are facing us today big time so it's very important well and I think part of the you know we've talked a lot about education yes, and how right. we don't know the whole story exactly um, I think what you just said is really really important because the historical record is there it's a question of whether people look at it mm-hmm. and learn from it and you know, many people watching may think that I'm an apologist for the Republican Party. Oh, no, well, th- that's not really the point. The yeah. point is, we're trying to fill in some gaps right. and correct some mis- misconceptions mm-hmm. that people have had for a long time. And it's because of not looking at the historical record. So I, I am completely in agreement with you that we need to spend some time individually and even have conversations together like what we're having now to say, so what is the whole story? Mm-hmm. Let's fill in those gaps. Let's understand what really what happened, not just the pre-digested version right, exactly. that we tend to get in school. Exactly, exactly. And we all suffer from that problem. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, in all due respect, and the, the, the other question that comes up is the, the whole issue of, uh, we've, got, we've got one more minute, but we'll, we'll really get into this deal. Why is it that our educational system, with these bright minds and these administrators, and that, did not include it? Maybe we're still talking about politics. I suspect it's because a lot of the teachers doing the teaching now don't know. They don't know. But, themselves. But, but in that curriculum, i.e. picking up their, their so-called teacher's credentials, is that part of the curriculum? I would say no. And I think it's because who's, whoever's writing the textbooks right. includes what they want right. and everybody pays attention to what they want instead of going back to the original source documents. Yes, right. That's the problem. That's Everybody right. waits for somebody else to do their homework yes. and then they just accept blindly what it is that they get pre-digested. Anyways, on that particular point, what we're going to do, we're going to take a short break and I would remind you to uh, again put your, put your recorder on and get a little bit more information, okay? We'll be right back and with, with Herb and we'll continue this conversation. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.